Hey, I'm Steven and this is Solving the Money Problem. If you're new, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. So today, guys, doing something a little bit different. We're going to wind the clock back 13 years to 2007. Listen to some comments that Elon Musk had regarding SpaceX's competition back then. Then we're going to reflect and see where are things at today. I think this will be fun. So without further ado, let's dive in. Hey guys, before I forget, we will have a great offer for US residents. If you'd like to get a free stock valued up to $1,400 and help out the channel, use the link in the description. And if you're outside the US, if you're in Australia, New Zealand, or the UK, I've got a great offer for stake where you can also get a free stock. Link in description. All right, let's get back to it. The name of your rocket ship is called the Falcon Explorer, is that it? Falcon 9. The Falcon 9. Yeah, is, it's is... the rocket. And, and then the, space, the spaceship is Dragon. Dragon. Yeah, so the Falcon 9 rocket lifts the Dragon spaceship, and the Dragon spaceship is what goes to the space station and then returns to Earth. You are not alone in this, this ambition to explore space Absolutely, as an the, entrepreneur. There's, there's quite a bit yeah. of competition out there. There's Jeff Bezos with Blue Origin. There's Richard Branson with his Virgin Galactic. Right. Um, and I'm not talking about NASA either. Yeah. Who is your competition? We have no serious competition. Now it's very easy to mistake that as, well, pure straight up savagery from Elon Musk, but honestly, it's just a reasonable statement of fact. Let's see what else he had to say. We have no serious competition. None. Not presently. And, and, so that and, Branson but, guy's kind of a hack then. Well, what uh, Branson's doing, by the way, I'm a great admirer of Branson, uh, is really um, a much smaller technological challenge. So their craft would be suborbital. Uh, so it would go to about Mach 3. Uh, our craft is orbital. It goes to Mach 25, so 25 times the speed of sound. To do what Branson is doing, you need, say, about nine units of energy. To do what we're doing, you need 625 units of energy. The difference is monumental. So, I mean, what Branson is doing from a technological standpoint is building something that can cross the English Channel. What we're building is something that can circumnavigate the globe. I still think what he's doing is great. And by the way, I bought a ticket on, on his effort, but it's not, it's not in the same league technologically. So you're not particularly worried? The things that worry me are, are, are we going to make a mistake? Our own foolishness, our own errors can, can hurt us. So rocket science really is rocket science. Yeah. <laughs> it looks hard and it's harder than it looks. So 13 years ago, Elon Musk was rightfully very dismissive of Virgin Galactic in terms of them competing with SpaceX because clearly they're not. SpaceX is sending commercial payloads to orbit, then eventually commercial crew, then eventually people to other planets. The goal of Virgin Galactic is to send space tourists up a little bit into the atmosphere for a new peak at Earth from a new perspective and then back down. So clearly not competitors. But then what about Blue Origin, founded by Jeff Bezos a few years before SpaceX, with billions of capital to develop a similar program where they also want to produce reusable rockets. Now of course the PR spins a little bit different. SpaceX make life multiplanetary. Blue Origin move industry to space. But at the end of the day, they both need to solve reusable rockets that can get payloads to orbit. That's the end goal of both companies. Let's face it, let's be honest, let's be realistic. So why would Elon Musk just dismiss Blue Origin and not a serious competition when you've got a multi-billionaire, like a decabillionaire who's funded and founding the company? Why not consider them competition? Well, let's have a look at where Blue Origin's at today. Let's see what progress they've made versus SpaceX. Let's see how are they tracking. Maybe Elon Musk was wrong. So here we are on the Blue Origin website looking at information about the new Shepard spacecraft. Our reusable launch vehicle is taking payloads and soon you to space. Oh, well great. It looks like they are competing with SpaceX. Oh, hang on a minute. It says suborbital space flight. Um, let's look at the new Glenn rocket. Let's read. New Glenn, our really big step an orbital reusable launch vehicle that will build the road to space. Well, let's experience New Glenn. Flight, this is northbound, Roger 1. Uh, guys, is it just me? Maybe I'm going crazy. I just, there's this voice in my head. It's, I think it's saying like Pixar, something like that. I don't know, Toy Story. Uh, I can't figure it out. Let's, we'll keep watching this video. I'll, I'll figure out eventually what's going on. I'm sorry for interrupting. Let's get back to it. That is some amazing camera work. I am loving this. I 
feel like I've seen this somewhere before. Okay, so what SpaceX was able to do four years ago in reality, today in 2020, Blue Origin still is only able to do aspirationally through computer generated images. Now this isn't to disparage Blue Origin, in fact I really admire what they're doing and I think the more companies trying to make space accessible the better. I'm all for it, the engineers who are working there are fantastic, I'm not disparaging or disregarding them at all. I'm giving a realistic assessment of where the two companies are at and also their pace of execution. Blue Origin have had the same runway of time to do the same things that SpaceX are doing. Yes, they may have had slightly different priorities. Cool, that's fine. But at the end of the day, the primary obstacle for both companies to overcome to achieve their long-term missions is to create reusable rockets. SpaceX is sending payloads to orbit on rockets they've flown multiple times and re-landing them on drone ships and on land, whereas Blue Origin are still moving towards their goal of having their first successful re-landing of an orbital class booster. They don't even have the rocket developed yet, let alone beginning to launch and try to re-land. So what SpaceX was doing four plus years ago, Blue Origin, still trying to get there. As it stands today, SpaceX literally has no competition for getting payloads into orbit economically because nobody else has developed reusable rockets. This is really rare for a single company to have such a stranglehold on a market space. No one can get close to competing on cost. So for the foreseeable future, SpaceX looks like they're gonna be printing billions of dollars of revenue by absolutely dominating the launch market. And it's quite interesting to think about because if you're fair, Blue Origin and SpaceX have had similar amounts of time to do similar things it appears SpaceX are far more resourceful, getting a lot more done with less. I think there's a real possibility that SpaceX may get enough of a lead that it will become unassailable as the space frontier opens up. If SpaceX technology is so far ahead that they brought their cost down so much further than everybody else, it is really going to be hard to compete. Blue Origin I'm sure will be okay. Jeff Bezos has very deep pockets and is committing a billion dollars a year to funding the company. But outside of that, I think if anyone's trying to break into this space race to actually open up the space frontier and solve reusable rockets, it's, it's a really, really tall order. So we've seen that SpaceX, under the leadership of Elon Musk, with a brilliant, brilliant, brilliant team of engineers, have been able to disrupt and innovate at a rate unmatched by anybody attempting to achieve the same goal. Now, let's shift our thinking to Tesla, also led by Elon Musk, also featuring brilliant engineers. As I've mentioned in other videos, in fact, SpaceX is the number one most desirable new employer for graduating engineering students in the US. Tesla, number two. So Tesla and SpaceX literally have the best engineers in the US. I personally believe that Tesla in the automotive industry is in a similar situation to what SpaceX is doing in the space and launch industry with their reusable rockets. Most people are mistakenly thinking that Tesla makes cars. What they've produced with the Model 3, Model Y, Model S, it's not a car. Yes, it can transport people from point A to point B. That's about where the similarities end. Primary source of power, momentum for actually moving the thing is completely different. You've got an internal combustion engine versus a lithium ion battery. And then you've got how the car operates, everything. Tesla is dematerializing as much as they can. Software controls most of the functions of the car. There's a lack of buttons because everything's done through the one touch screen, okay? The technology lead that they're developing now, what they're doing, I see so many parallels between what SpaceX has done in terms of capturing the launch mark just getting a stranglehold because their technology their rate of innovation their engineering smarts are just on a whole other level i see the same thing happening with tesla in the automotive industry in the energy storage and generation industries so a little bit of food for thought guys let me know your thoughts in the comments below do you see similarities between the lead that tesla has developed in terms of their battery technology their software their computers their full self-driving data lead and the lead that spacex has developed with their reusable rockets for launch technology and just opening the space frontier i personally believe that right now, Tesla is launching their equivalent of reusable rockets and hardly anybody is noticing. I think that they've won the decade. Their battery lead, their software lead, their full self-driving data lead, each of these could win the race and they're winning all three by a huge margin and they're not slowing down. Don't forget your free socks with Weeble and Stake. Links are in the description. I'm Stephen Mark Ryan. This is Solving the Money Problem and I love you all. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And of course, if you have any ideas for future videos, let me know. I read all your comments.
P.S. If you're still watching, you're awesome. This channel has kind of blown up since it launched, and I'm working on making the best possible content for you guys, but it takes time. Consider supporting the channel at patreon.com slash solving the money problem so I can continue creating content for you guys. There's a link in the description. And you can now also become a member of the channel to get some exclusive perks. To learn more, click the join button next to subscribe. Either way, the best form of support is you being here and watching, so thanks again.